Hello my friends, welcome back to A Common Touch of Fantasy, and this is the first bi-weekly update of the year of 2019. These are the books that I read during the first two weeks of January. I'm hoping to do a bi-weekly wrap-up uh, for this year and see how it goes. No promises, but this is what I'm hoping to do uh, this year. So let's go ahead and go over what I read in the last two weeks. And then I'll also talk about what I'm planning on reading in the next two weeks. So first off, this is my TBR shelf. One of my main goals this year is to read more books that I own. And so these are the books that I will be pulling from to read throughout the year, the physical books. And I'm hoping to read a lot of these. I don't think I'm going to be able to read all of these but I would like to at least read at least half of these. So now that we got a visual of my TBR shelf that I want to read from, now we have a shelf where books are going to go. And this is the graveyard. The TBR graveyard, these are the slain books from the TBR that um, I created a whole shelf and I'm going to put all the books that I read that I own on that shelf and take pictures of them and show it to you guys while I talk about the books. So the first one I read of this year was Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I also listened to this on audiobook. It was a little bit of a combo thing where I would listen to it and follow along in the book. This was really good. You know, Orson Scott Card is not the greatest of human beings. However, uh, Ender's Game was good. I really enjoyed it. I thought that the idea of having these children in uh, warfare and space warfare and their innocence being taken from them because they're in this military uh, I thought that was a really interesting premise and it, and it made it show how devastating it is when you take a child's childhood away from them I thought it was a lot of fun, uh, and I will probably continue with the series. The next book I read uh, of the TBR shelf was The Golden Compass, the first book in the Philip Pullman, His Dark Materials uh, series. Now, once again, you can always see all my reviews of these books on my website at commontouchoffantasy.com. Anyways, The Golden Compass was not that great for me. It was just an okay book. I gave it like a 2.5 rating. And the reason why was because Lyra, the main character, did not act like a kid. And when I read middle grade books or if I read young adult, the reason why I read those books is because I want to see how those young protagonists deal with young adult issues or middle grade issues and how they relate to their peers. In this book, however, Lyra is hardly ever with her peers. And so it's basically her with a bunch of grown-ups, and that just didn't work for me. You could have replaced Lyra with a middle-aged woman or a man, and it wouldn't have changed the story all that much. However, the world building in this book was fantastic. I really liked the, the demons that they had and how they were like little familiars and they would go with them they they shared like a soul like a spirit and if one hurt the other hurt as well and i thought that was really great however the interaction between uh Lyra's demon and her didn't make up for the fact that i wanted her to have another kid with her on this adventure and there just wasn't that that unfortunately however in the second book of this series the Subtle Knife, which I just finished about 20 minutes ago, uh, she does have another kid with her. However, he doesn't really act like a kid either. And so it's this weird thing where all the children in this series are act like adults. And because of that, I'm not enjoying it as much as I would like to. However, Pullman really amps up his game with the world building in this book. And... If you're interested at all in a multi-universe type of system where different universes, different worlds are very similar, however, they're 
core ideas and some of the core differences are uh, make them very unique I say check this series out I hope to read the next book the amber spyglass in the next two weeks so far this series has been kind of a letdown even though the subtle knife was better than the golden compass it was still only like a three star read for me which means I liked it but it wasn't that amazing all right now to the books that I read on digital formats uh, I read Neil deGrasse Tyson's Astrophysics for People in a Hurry on audiobook. Uh, this, <laughs> this was interesting because uh, I'm not much of a science person and I thought this was going to be a very basic physics lesson, however, astrophysics lesson. However, it's more of like this over-encompassing, throw everything at the wall tell every everything that you possibly can about the broad topics of astrophysics and I got lost a few times in this audiobook just because there was a lot of material here but I think he made this to get people interested in the subject and then for them to go and research more about it however uh, my lack of knowledge in the astrophysics world really showed while listening to this. I also listened to Yes Please by Amy Pure. This is a memoir of her going through her comedic life and um, how she started comedy and how she got to where she got. And the thing I took away the most from this audiobook is that people assume that sometimes uh, actors or actresses are given their opportunities and she's basically saying that she had to work really hard to get her opportunities and most people that happens they have to work extremely hard to get to where they want to go in Hollywood in uh, the entertainment industry it's not like you get discovered and all of a sudden you're in your own TV show and so uh, I really appreciated her hard work to get where she wanted to get. And also it was interesting to see her thoughts on females in comedy and how it's such a male uh, driven and there's so many men in the industry and not as many women and her struggles with that. So that was good. It was funny. Please listen to it on audiobook because the audiobook is hilarious. I uh, give that like a three star read. Uh, Uncanny, the January, February edition of that. Uh, this was an all right issue. I think my favorite story from this was the Ellen Kushner reprint uh, that was from like the, the Riverside stories, where uh, basically is where Alec and uh, Richard met. And then there was a Delilah S. Uh, Dawson story that I liked. That was like a gothic, southern gothic story. And there was another story by um, uh, Ahmad. And she wrote a story about two Muslim Indian girls that moved. And they were doing experiments. And they were extremely smart. And they were basically trying to figure out uh, this really special experiment while also dealing with the fact that they moved across the world and their mother is grieving over the possibility of her sister dying that was a pretty good story other than that it wasn't the greatest of issues from uncanny uh, Dan Harris his follow-up to 10% happy happier is meditation for fidgety skeptics and I listened to this on audiobook as well and I thought this was pretty good I enjoyed it I learned a lot and it's basically him and Jeff Warren going throughout the country, getting celebrities, getting people they know to try meditation. It's a very uh, basic book on meditation where they cover many types of meditation. It's all mindfulness meditation, but uh, different types that focus on different things. And because of that, there's a lot of information in this book and a little bit too much actually because you're just starting to understand what they're saying about um, like focus or compassion and then they switch to another type of meditation focus and so there's a lot here 
However, the format of it could have been a lot better. Uh, but I, I did like it. And then there's Make Your Bed. Uh, this is an audio book I listened to as well. And it's basically uh, a commencement address created into a book. So it is an ex-Navy SEAL. And he is talking about his time in the Navy and the things that he learned that he wants to pass on to future generations. And first off, you know, make your bed. And then he talks about counting on other people. And there's different life lessons that you can apply to your life. Now, this is a very military focused uh, book. So a lot of this is very much about, you know, being more gritty, being tougher, uh, being stronger, and just getting through and doing the right thing. However, in real life, there's so many variables and circumstances where being more gritty just doesn't work for you, you know? However, this William uh, McRaven audiobook still was decent to listen to. It was only a few hours, so I would recommend it if you have a few hours to kill. So the first two week stats, I had finished eight books, uh, three for my TBR shelves. I wish that was a little bit higher. Four audiobooks, uh, one short fiction magazine, uh, 2,213 total pages with the audiobooks. However, without the audiobooks, an actual book reading, I only read 900 pages, which is very small. Uh, for me and uh, something I want to improve on for the next two weeks Now this is now what my bookshelf looks like my TBR bookshelf I pulled out the Ender's Game book and the two Philip Pullman book Hopefully with my TBR for the next two weeks. We can get some more books off this shelf So I am now at three out of hundred and four books from that TBR uh, next week, I want to listen to Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. That is one of my audiobooks. I also want to listen to Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I'll probably also read this with a combo book, a combo with a book if I need to. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I am also going to finish the... Um, his Dark Materials series and the, Am the Amber Spyglass. This one is a little bit thicker. What I did actually is I put little uh, book sticky marks on the amount of pages I have to read for each day, which I'll talk about here in a second. I'm also reading this nonfiction book, The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. That's going to be my nonfiction physical book for the week. And then I am starting this beast in this amazing series that everyone seems to like, uh, Malice by John Gwynn. So this is the first book in his first series. What was it called again? I forget. Let me, let's check it out. The Faithful in the Fallen series. So yeah. So I have these three physical books that I'm focusing on. Also, I have um, Asimov's the January and February issue, and that's going to be my short fiction for the next two weeks. So the upcoming week is pretty, it's, it's, there's a lot. There's a hundred and, uh, 1,570 pages of actual books. So these three, um, plus the Asimov's, uh, ends up being 1570, about 20 hours of audio. So that averages out to about 112 pages a day and an hour and a half of audio a day. So uh, I'm gonna have to, to really read a lot. My goal is to read at least three hours every day for the next two weeks. Uh, I got this really cool bookmark timer to help me keep track of my reading. So what it does is you can set like a reading sprint to read for like 30 minutes and then it'll make it a little alarm after it's over, but it also can count up and you could see how much you read throughout the entire week or entire day or entire month if you want to. I think it goes up to 
99 hours of reading that I can go up to. So I love this thing. It's so cool. And it's, it's made perfectly for me. It's amazing. So basically, I have to read uh, 20 pages a day of the Productivity Project. I have to read 40 pages a day of the Amber Spyglass. And I have to read 50 pages a day of Malice. And then 15 pages a day of the Asimov's uh, magazine. And like I said, I put little stickies uh, in between each section of pages I need to read for the day. Uh, to give it a try. I probably won't do that anymore. I'll probably just move my bookmark to like how many I need to read. And then I'll just stop when I get to the bookmark instead. But uh, I thought that would be fun to do. So that is what I read the first two weeks and what I'm planning on reading the next two weeks. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great next two weeks of reading and that things are going really well in your life. Let me know what you're up to in the comments below. Thanks for watching.